Hello everyone, today I want to share my MLE builds and teams with you in the short guide. As always, I start with the build, then go over teams and at the end show some of this gameplay. Everybody stand back! Huh? Judgment! Punishment! It's a quite standard build, her skills do very reasonable damage, so crit crit damage and dendro damage bonus are quite good on her, and of course both of her passive skills are very much oriented around attack, one of them having a break point at 3000, you definitely want to get as close as possible to this, but of course there are things to help out with it, like pyro resonance, the missive wind spear or the um, noblesse set. But even baseline, if you have like 24 or 2500 attack, which is a little bit unusually high, it definitely is quite beneficial for a character like this. And her bear skill hits quite hard, so you definitely want to press it off cooldown. So 140 energy recharge is not bad, but it is quite cheap, especially if you have Dendro Resonance with the second Dendro character like Nahida, for example. You can basically get away without any energy recharge. And one thing that is a little bit strange is this character is all about burning, but the way burning itself works or more specifically how it's reapplied all the time you can't really trigger it consistently with just one character so investing into elemental mastery for burning itself is not very valuable so i would just ignore it on emily as for talents, this character's damage is kind of spread out through the entire skill kit, even her passive skill hits quite hard, so I would definitely level up the bear skill and elemental skill simultaneously, and in turn that also means if you have specific damage bonuses like elemental skill damage bonus or bear skill damage bonus, it's not quite as valuable, I would stick to more general damage bonus like dendro damage bonus or of course just attack or crit damage to boost all of these sources simultaneously. As for constellations, a lot of just extra damage for constellation 1 is passive skill and elemental skill damage and constellation 4 is extra duration for the bear skill and then constellation 6 is the usual normal attack dendro infusion. A lot of sub DPS have this at constellation 6 to suddenly make them viable as on-field character. And then the most noticeable to me is Constellation 2, because right now we don't have a lot of Dendro Resistance Shred in the game, I think it's only the Deep Wood Memory Set and Zhongli, so this is another source which is quite nice, unfortunately locked behind a Constellation 2 though. But it's 30% which is quite sizable, and of course it makes sense because you can't really do too much in this game to increase burning damage, it's only Elemental Mastery, the character's level, and of course the enemy resistances that you can manipulate. As for weapons, especially when we talk about free-to-play 4-star options, it's getting a little bit rough out here, honestly. Um, if you have the Missive Wind Spear, it's honestly a very good option, but if you missed the event and you didn't manage to pick it up, then it's getting a little bit rough here. The Dragon Spain can be good, uh, the effect definitely is valuable, but unfortunately the, the base attack is very low, which is quite bad for this character, and of course Elemental Mastery isn't really a high priority. Um, Aside from this, you could maybe um, forge like the Moon Piercer, I believe it's called, the Sumeru recipe, but it's honestly a little bit tedious to always pick up the leaf to get the extra attack in my opinion, but the base attack of that weapon is definitely way better. And then, otherwise, it's honestly just weapon banner exclusives, you have something like the Lithic Spear, especially if you have leeway characters in your party, or like the Royal Spear, or like most importantly, I think the Wavebreaker's Fin might be really good on this character. Otherwise, I think you have to resort to some 5-star weapons for the high base attack, just to scale this character's attack way better than you could with 4-star weapons. And Maybe in like less than two weeks whenever Netland releases, we get better craftable options, who knows, but maybe it's just a spear with like, for example, defense percentage as substats, and it doesn't change anything. As for artifacts, we already covered substats earlier, as for main stats, it's guaranteed attack percentage here, then dendro damage bonus here, if you have very low attack, like sub 2000 on like a Dragon's Bane build, for example, I could see attack percentage also being better here, but it's probably something that an optimizer tool or theory crafters could tell you better than I. And then in the last slot, crit or crit damage is definitely the way to go, whichever one balances your stats better. As for the set, it's, I think, also pretty much guaranteed the Unfinished Reverie is the best one. Um, it has everything she needs, attack and a lot of damage bonus. And then a close second, in my opinion, is the Deep Wood Memory, especially if you have a second Dendro character on your team like Nahida that deals a lot of damage. This Dendro Resistance Shred will help out a lot. And I mainly use it because my Unfinished Reverie doesn't have anywhere close of these substats. And then 
if you don't have any of these, I think the Golden Troop can work as a temporary option. Like I said earlier, I don't think her elemental skill is impressive enough by itself to justify building so much damage bonus specific to just her elemental skill. As for team compositions, of course, Emily herself is already quite restrictive since she basically at all times wants burning enemies around her. And the more I think about it, I think the more restrictive it becomes to for the healer slot as well because I think Bennett is pretty much mandatory. He's just that good. Of course, he can already enable the burning by himself, so without picking any other pyro characters, you can already have this condition fulfilled, especially if you pick like Kazuha in the next slot and infuse his burst skill with pyro, then you're pretty much set. But, of course, if you pick a second Pyro character, you already have Pyro Resonance, and Bennett also plays a Dino Bless set more often than not, and both of those are invaluable assets for Emily, of course, who has a very high attack scaling on both of her passive skills. And that's like basically the um, pro and cons for Bennett. I think you could also pick Zhongli instead, because Resistance Shred is also quite good in her teams. But that's about it. And the last thing I want to say about Bennett is also basically all of the DPS Pyro characters, like for example, Alekino, Lenny, Yoimiya, Klee, Diluc, basically everybody but Hu Chao are attack scaling characters, so they all benefit a lot from Bennett. And furthermore, if you go for the Melt Burn route, which unfortunately is only really possible with the Rosaria because we don't have any other good sub DPS Cryo characters then it's of course another no-brainer that you want to pick Bennett since her burst still snapshots and you can all the benefit from his attack buff while she's off field. So again, the longer I think about it, the more you want Bennett, especially if you drop these characters, because one other very straightforward team is of course you pick Zhangling, and in the last slot, unfortunately I don't have him, but Linny, and you go for the triple pyro Linny team with Emily to enable burning, and those are the two um, like most straightforward options I can think of. And of course, you can play Burning, like I don't get tired of saying in this video, it is not great, but it's at the same time not unplayably terrible, I would say. So having a team like this that only focuses on Burning can definitely do well, especially if, if you have characters in your team that do like quite reasonable personal damage, so you don't really care if Burning is there or not. So a character like Klee or any Pyro character can be fine, then Kazuha, Sucrose for example, Nahida, or if you have a C6 Bandit, you can you can even just drop the uh, main DPS all together and play something like this for example. Of course, um, jungling snapshots, so you play C6 Bennett on field with the Pyro Infusion and Kazu also buffs up your jungling as well. Otherwise, you can also pick something like for example Nahida and then you have just her on field doing normal attacks and reapplying a lot of the burning and same as Kazuha who also has very high elemental mastery both of those so it's very likely that your burning actually does very good damage unless Emily reapplies it and overrides it as a low elemental mastery character which would be a little bit unfortunate of course but in the team like this it's quite reasonable to assume that your burning will actually contribute quite a bit. And then, of course, you could also play Sucrose on field. Of course, you don't really care about, um, uh, what's it called, uh, Anemo Resonance or something like this, for example. And Sucrose on field can obviously also spread around with a normal attack sum, like uh, the Pyro application, for example. And these two characters also have very high elemental mastery, and chances are high that you will do some reasonable burning damage as well. And those, I already alluded to the fact that burning has some problems there, that it gets reapplied for example. There are other problems with burning and maybe even with Emily herself. And I might even do some suggestions what you could do better, but I will do it in a separate video. Of course I will spare you the details of this uh, theoretically, theoretical rambling in this video. But in case you're curious, just look forward to the next one. And now for the showcase, Emily is very easy to use, so basically you just have to make sure that the enemies are burning and everything else will happen by itself. Of course, if you have like snapshotting characters in your team like Rosaria or Zhangling, then of course you want to make sure that Bennett goes before them, but that's basically all there is to it. And then one more thing to mention, it's a little detail, but I think the missive wind spear cannot trigger off field, so you definitely want to make sure that to trigger one elemental reaction with her on field to activate this, and then it lasts for 10 seconds, which should be good enough and that's about it so to quickly showcase it 
I apply Pyro first, then I trigger Burning with Emily, and that should activate the Massive Wind Spear as well. Then I just trigger some, some other stuff, swell some with Sucrose, and as you see, it's already dead. And for now I'm gonna leave you with uh, some Abyss gameplay. Unfortunately I realized afterwards that I was still experimenting around on some golden troop set. Of course if I have an idea on the team it would have been really beneficial if I had the deep wood memory set here for the resistance thread. But I guess it's still okay enough but you can imagine that it could have been better. Share my knowledge! Teamwork is dreamwork! Let's one with nature, as one with wind and cloud. The wind knows me. <gasps> this will brighten up the place. The temple of wisdom. I see everything. I'm going in. One with nature, clouds high. The birds call. Extract! Fresh and floral! Hey! The wind knows me. Coming was more targeted. Fresh your wings and raise it! Teamwork is dreamwork! Huh? Into the wind! As one with wind and cloud! The wind knows me. Uh, Everyone hold hands. This will brighten up the place. The Neutralize. Alright, we made it to the end. It's the last time we will see this location at the end of one of my guys because it's another year over and next time we will be somewhere in that land. I'm actually quite excited, so stay tuned for that. Until then, have fun and bye-bye.